My name is uh, Alicia Bloor. Welcome to the first lesson of the Healing Our Spirit Fiddle program that the Métis Nation of Ontario is hosting uh, this fall. Um, as I said, my name is Alicia. I'm an MNO citizen, proud Métis citizen, um, and I'm extremely excited to be part of this project. Uh, I've been fiddling since, uh, since I was young, uh, since around eight, um, but the fiddle, uh, as you will find out, can be learned pretty much at, at any age. Um, and so I've had the privilege of learning from uh, several fiddle elders from uh, throughout uh, Canada and have been teaching some of those tunes that I learned um, uh, on and off for the past 10 years. So um, yeah, I'm extremely thrilled to be a part of this part of this project. Um, and I'm so happy that there are so many of you out there who want to learn to play this really special instrument. Um, the fiddle uh, is, is so important to our people, um, our Métis people and our Métis communities. Um, it was in the past and it still is today, a uh, really integral part of, of who we are. And uh, uh, what I really love about, about the fiddle is that it not only um, is a melody, but it also has a story. There's often stories behind um, every tune, stories of traveling, stories of community, stories of, of myth, mythical kind, kind of stories. So, um, uh, yeah, so I know that the fiddle is, is important um, in, my, in my family and in my community, um, to the Métis Nation of Ontario especially. Um, it's often at many of our celebrations, right? Like the AGA or rendezvous or, or little um, get-togethers or gatherings, activities that many communities have. There's often a fiddle player or fiddle music um, or some sort of music uh, going on in the background or as part of the event. I know my family uh, at Christmas time and New Year's and birthdays, uh, there's often a, a fiddle um, or fiddle music being played, uh, and a guitar, of course, and um, and yeah, I'm 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 hoping or I'm thinking that there's often a lot of other Métis families that do the similar kinds of things. Uh, if it's not the fiddle, or it soon will be the fiddle, um, it's often you know guitars and singing and and that kind of thing. Um, so so yeah, this is a, a new project, really exciting uh, project. Uh, it will we'll be teaching this online and um, uh, pre-recording kind of format, uh, which is you know it has its perks, but also has some challenges, and so we have to get used to some of those um, as as the project goes on. So um, I will try my best uh, as the as the instructor for these classes, as one of the instructors for this class. Um, to, to make the best of these classes and, and try to make them as, as in-person as possible uh, without being in-person. Uh, so throughout watching these lessons online, um, I suggest maybe having a pen or a paper or um, definitely having your fiddle with you uh, and, uh, or your phone and make some, make some notes about you know, questions, um, or uh, yeah, even make notes of, of the things that, that I'm discussing with you because uh, they're quite important. Um, so yeah, if you do have any questions, um, don't hesitate to bring them up in our, uh, in our virtual in-person meetings that are happening, gatherings that are happening every other week. So uh, as the first lesson for this week, um, we're gonna be learning lots of stuff in this, in this lesson. Um, definitely unpacking our, our violins or our fiddles, um, learning how to take care of our fiddles, uh, learning the string names, you know, where to position your fingers as well, um, and how to position the instrument itself, and um, hoping to also learn uh, the finger positions for a little tune called Hot Cross Buns. So there's lots we're going to be doing uh, in this lesson. Each lesson, um, this one might be a big one, probably about 45 minutes or so. Some of them will be a little bit less once we get into the, the core of, of a tune. But uh, yeah, first let's uh, unpack one of these fiddles, all right? So these ones, um, this one's a stentor, but you guys have Eastman's, very kind of, um, a very decent beginner style fiddle or violin. The violin, fiddle, same thing, just so you know. 
So let's unpack these. Uh, you probably have like a little boat room, zipper. So yeah, go ahead, lift it up. All right, so this is probably more or less what yours is gonna look like. Um, you have your fiddle, you have a bow. Uh, sometimes they throw extra little things in the top. So it's always good to look and see what's in your little nooks and crannies. So this beginner fiddle has or has um, straps that you can actually attach um, on the back. If you were to carry it around, so you can carry it somewhere. It's kind of handy. And then another really cool pocket is this one right here. People don't realize sometimes. There should be a little pocket here. And then in your case, there's most likely a little box. And this is called rosin, which we're going to talk about in lesson two. So just leave that one, put it back in your case. Okay, so let's um, let's take out our fiddles. Just leave your bow where it is for now. Take out your fiddles. All right. And uh, I thought I'd go over some parts to the fiddle. Um, just so we know what we're talking about, because you're going to need to know some of these parts uh, for tuning your fiddle or for even learning, basic learning how to play it. Okay, so this part is the neck of the fiddle. This black piece on top, all right, this black piece on top is the fingerboards. There's often strings, right? Kind of going from the scroll of the fiddle, which is this funky thing. These are called pegs. All right, so your string is attached into those pegs and they go down and then they attach into, they go over this wooden piece right here. All right, this wooden piece is called the bridge and they attach into something called the tailpiece. On the tailpiece, they'll have these little Kind of little button type things. They're actually for little screws. Those are fine tuners, which we're gonna we're gonna need those later on. Um, yeah, you have a tailpiece. This one's called an end button, which we're gonna need to know for putting on a shoulder rest. And then of course you have um, these are called sound holes. All right, that's where the sound when it's produced it projects out. And then within your fiddles, um, I want you to take a look within the sound holes, okay? And I want you to take a look for a little wooden post, all right? A little wooden post that should be sticking up like this, okay? You're sticking up like this right in your fiddle. So check out, make sure you have your sound posts. That sound post is really important um, for keeping your fiddle up, all right? If you don't have a sound post, if you hear something kind of like rattling around in there, it's not a good thing. Uh, you're going to need to get that fixed ASAP, put it back in place. Um, and if that is happening, make sure you take note of it. And uh, we'll get that sorted in our class, in our in-person class. Okay. So yeah, those are sort of the main, the main uh, parts of the violin itself. There are other strings, you know, G, A, D, G. We'll go over that. Okay, put your fiddle back in, kind of Velcro it in. We'll take out our bow for a second. So this is your, your bow. And uh, yeah, tip of the bow. This is the frog of the bow, right? So you see that there's sort of these like shiny um, ivory kind of looking things. They're not really ivory anymore. Uh, that's the frog of the bow, so the end of your bow where you put your actual hand, known as the frog. And uh, there's two parts, right? There's the, the wooden piece, and then there's actually, this white stuff is actually horse hair. And from the tail of the horse, and uh, best not to touch that, um, as uh, your oil on your fingers, even if you didn't just eat a greasy, you know, fried chicken, you have oil in your hands at all times, and the oil of your fingers actually damages the bow. And uh, yeah, so it's always best to try to avoid touching the bow hairs. You can always touch the wood, 
not so great to touch that white uh, or whatever color it is, the horse hair on your bow, okay? A couple other things to note, um, kind of going into fiddle care <laughs> right now, which is a good lead, uh, taking care of your bow. So right now, there's a screw at the end, okay, right there, there's a screw. All right, make sure that your bow um, is not tight, okay? So you'll, if you start twisting that, right, you'll notice that my bow, the length from the hair to the wood is getting larger, all right? We'll talk about bows a little bit more for the next week, but just make sure it's loose, okay? That screw is loose, not coming out, but just unscrewed enough so that it's, it's loose. One other thing about the bow before we put it away till next class is that uh, this bow actually, when I took it out, had a few straggling hairs. Totally fine, your bow is not broken. Your hairs will um, eventually all come off, but not all at once, right? One at a time. So you can, uh, don't pull them out, right? You can either bite, I bind them out, or you can take some scissors and just give it a nice little haircut, all right? without chopping off any others. Great. Okay, a couple other fiddle care stuff. Let's put this bow back in. So I put it with the hairs. Um, you can put it with the hairs up or down. There's a little knob over here. Make sure you flip that up so it stays in place. Okay, let's go on to a little more about taking care of your fiddle. So fiddles, fiddles and bows in general, are um, kind of sensitive instruments. I kind of treat mine like a, <laughs> I used to treat mine like a little baby. Um, and uh, yeah, they really do need a lot of care. So you have to handle your instruments always with care. Uh, uh, lots of uh, the pieces that are included in this are breakable, typically wooden parts. Um, and sometimes repairs can be quite expensive and, uh, and time consuming. So, couple of tips we're going to go over about maintaining and keeping your fiddle um, as best as we can be so that you don't have to do some of those expensive repairs. All right, so first tip is um, don't let anyone other than yourself or someone you know who knows actually how to play the fiddle or violin touch your fiddle, okay? Uh, make sure that you give them, if you are going to give your fiddle out to someone, make sure that you just, you go through them, the things that I'm going through with you, because you never know, you might come back with a fiddle that's not in one piece anymore. All right, so a couple of things. So when you're putting your case or your fiddle away, make sure you're Velcroing it in place. And if things aren't fitting smoothly, that means something's in the way. Don't just like slam it and keep making it try to fit. There's clearly something wrong if it's not easily being closed. So no push down on your case. Make sure it's closed all the way. Make sure your fiddle's latched inside and that it's all being nice and uh, neat in there. All right. Fiddles and bows belong in pieces when they're not being used. Um, the reason for that is. Lots of accidents can happen if you just leave your fiddle, you know, lying around, especially on a chair. Um, that's a full no-no. You very easily, someone can be like, oh, I'm just going to have a seat. There goes your fiddle. So whenever you're not going to be playing your fiddle or using your fiddle at all, make sure it's in that case uh, just to keep it nice and safe. Um, another thing, uh, don't leave your fiddles in extreme temperatures, all right? Try to leave it in a place that's, um, that's sort of room temperature, right? Never near a radiator or your heat or your cool air filters that are in your house or vents, I mean. And whatever you do, if you're going to be taking your fiddle out from your home, um, you know, leave it away from your windows so it doesn't heat up. Never ever leave your fiddle in a car when it's really hot or really cold. Fiddles don't really like that, um, especially the heat. Fiddles are really sensitive to heat. Um, and uh, the reason being, never leave it in hot areas. There's actually glue that's being, um, that's keeping this part of this fiddle together. And uh, with heat, the glue melts and you'll, you'll open your case and you'll have a fiddle in about 10 pieces. 
So never leave your fiddle in a hot area and a cold area too, but especially the hots. Um, if the temperature is uncomfortable for you, it's also bad for your instruments, all right? Um, another thing, uh, sorry uh, to tell you this, but if you like long fingernails, you gotta cut them off, all right? Um, even mine are a little bit, a little bit long for today, uh, but we'll make do. Long fingernails over time actually will destroy your fingerboard. All right, it'll chip away at the at the paint stuff, and you'll get these really nasty kind of um, indents there, and it'll it'll uh, it'll be something you'll have to paint or take to the fiddle shop to repair. So, clip your fingernails. It's also easier to play if you have um, shorter fingernails. All right. Um, what else? We talked about the bow. Uh, let's see if there's any other things. Uh, oh, let's talk about the strings on the fiddle. So you'll notice there's, as we talked about, there's four strings on this violin or fiddle. Um, like the bow, uh, try to avoid with, try to avoid touching areas where your bow will be playing. Particularly, your bow is going to be played between this part, which is the bridge, right? We learned about that. And the fingerboard. Awesome. So typically your bow is going to be in between that area right there. So avoid touching in that area. <laughs> uh, your fingers typically goes on the fingerboard, with this, which is this nice black piece right here that goes from here to there, right? Fingers are not so good in this area because, uh, yeah, your oils will um, stay on, on the fiddle and uh, and affect your, your bow playing or your grip that you're able to have while playing fiddle. Um, <clears throat> while we're talking about uh, strings, strings can, can break. So we'll talk a little bit more about strings breaking during tuning, but uh, just quickly, strings can break if you play around with these guys up here, which are called the uh, pegs, they will actually, uh, they can break, um, and uh, especially this one really small one, you'll notice they're different thicknesses. This one's really small one is the E string. That one's a little more temperamental. temperamental. So, um, so yeah, we'll talk about that one um, when we're tuning later on. It's also um, kind of important, not really, but a little important to keep your instrument clean if that's what you're into. Uh, I'll show you what my fiddle looks like. I'm not so good at keeping it clean. So that white dust uh, is the rosin, and uh, sometimes I don't, I don't really clean it off. But you should clean it off because actually the rosin will get, um, will eventually over time damage uh, the, the um, furnish or the varnish, sorry, that's on your fiddle. So there's probably not one in your kit, but if, if you have one around, a very clean, never been used uh, microfiber cloth or one of those glass. You know, the ones that you clean your glasses with, those will do. And I'll actually, oh, I'll, I'll clean my fiddle. You can see what it looks like before and after. So yeah, it's all white, right? And uh, we'll use this one. Just kind of give it a wipe down. Just until all that white dust, so you can already see, is um, off your fiddle. You might have to do a little underneath here, and then a little underneath here. So you don't have to do this every time. I would wait until you get like a decent amount of, of uh, you can also do the strings, decent amount of white rosin dust or whatever uh, on your fiddle, and then, and then you can give it a nice wipe. Look at that, brand new. All right, let's put this away. So yeah, that's uh, important and um, doesn't have to be done every time. I would say like once a month, maybe kind of thing. Another really important, uh, especially going into the into the winter months, is um, you ever notice how your skin gets really dry in the winter time? Well, your fiddle will also get really dry in the winter time, and fiddles kind of temperamental instruments, as you're gonna find out, and it's important to keep them 
uh, with a decent amount of humidity. Not too much humidity. To find out and if you play it in the summertime, can kind of be, uh, muffles your fiddle and makes it hard to, um, to stay in tune. But you do want some humidity in your fiddle. So you can buy, there's a, um, I wonder if I have it here. There's a little humidifier you can buy. I don't have it. It kind of looks like a little tube where you wet it and you place it in the sound post of your fiddle. But um, a little hack that's uh, actually um, uh, Joe Poitras, his wife Elsa, learned to play the fiddle. This is a little hack that Elsa Poitras taught me. Um, she does with her fiddles. She got like a little Tupperware case, drilled a couple holes in them, just a regular old sponge. You gotta wet the sponge, shake out any excess water, plop it back in your little Tupperware, and uh, just place this, you know, like just in your fiddle case, like so. And uh, once it gets completely dried out, repeat, and um, that'll keep your fiddle from uh, drying out. When it dries out, it leads to cracks, okay? So we wanna try to avoid cracks. We want your instrument to last you for a really long time, all right? All right, I think that's all I wanna say about, um, about uh, caring for the fiddle. There might be other things as we go along. <coughs> so let's um, continue on, because I want, there's so much to get through in this lesson, so much really important information um, that I wanna share with you. So the first thing we're gonna actually Take out your fiddles. Uh, we're going to learn not only the string names over that, but also learn how to hold your instrument. Okay? All right. So before we get started on uh, learning how to hold the instrument, there's one other thing um, I wanted to share with you. Um, it's really, as you'll notice in your cases, um, there's another piece, a couple of other items. <laughs> but one item that I think is really key, uh, especially when you're learning to hold your violin, is a shoulder rest. So you can go out and purchase a shoulder rest. Kuhn, K-U-N, makes pretty decent ones. Um, the shoulder rest is kind of important. Um, if you don't have one, it's really hard to hold and you'll end up playing like, like one of those old, old timer styles, which is fine, but uh, you can really do a lot more when you have a lot more, um, to, when you can hold your fiddle a lot better. So yeah, you can go ahead and if you really want to, you can purchase one of these Kuhn violin rests. Um, I would try to stick with brand names like KUN, Kuhn, or Wolf brand ones, try not to, to cheap out and get $5 or $10 one on Amazon typically don't work. Um, but if you, yeah, these will run you about uh, 30 to 50 bucks. If you don't have those kind of funds right now, totally understandable. Or if you think you wanna try something else, um, they also make these really funky, um, they're called sponge shoulder rests. All right, they come in different sizes. Um, six or five will probably do you good. These ones are a lot cheaper than the shoulder rest. Um, they run about um, between five and ten dollars. Um, so yeah, these ones are pretty decent, actually. Um, alternative to shoulder rests, and uh, yeah, you can place them on your neck, or sorry, on your shoulder right here. So the long part, you'll notice there's one part of it extra long. That one's the one that's coming down on your chest. All right, so that long piece going right there. And then I'm just putting a little on top. See how much more I can hold with that versus with that one. Ooh, it's falling. <laughs> All right, so yeah, if, you, if you're able to purchase one of these, they can be really helpful. You can also string them down with elastics. Um, you end up buying one, but you don't have any of those. I'm assuming most people in their house 
have a sponge, right? You can get one or two sponges. Um, and I like to put a little cloth as well. Most people, this is a J cloth, a sponge. You don't have to have the J cloth. You can do it without, but I have little scrubby stuff on my, on my sponges. So uh, yeah, just for extra comfort, I have a nice cloth as well. These are most people in their house will have these kind of things. So if you want to pause this video and go go grab a J cloth or some sort of um, decent sized towel, uh, thin, I would say a thin cloth or towel, even a pillowcase might do, and, uh, and a sponge, and I'll teach you how to make your own shoulder rests. Okay, I'm assuming you guys, you have your things that you might need, your J cloth and your shoulder sponge, your shoulder sponge as we're gonna refer to it now. Okay, so I'm just opening up this J cloth, right, like so, folding it over, and then I'm gonna just start rolling it up like a little burrito. Although that's the official term. <laughs> just kidding, that's the official term. So we're gonna roll up our little, our little violin or fiddle sponge that we're gonna call it now and we're rolling it up. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna grab our fiddle. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you to grab. It's not critical, but one thing you might need to grab is an elastic. Okay, so if you don't have an elastic, let's, let's do it without the elastic first. You can just simply, like I did with the other one, place it down, right? Sort of like it's a pillow, right? Like you're gonna fall asleep on it. All right, so place it down like so. And then you can just put your fiddle up, right? And you get the same kind of effect, okay? The elastics, will help you with, with um, securing it in place so it doesn't slide around. So if we're to look, right, if we're to look, kind of measure it, I think it's gonna kind of go like this, vertically across, right? I just put it flat down. So let's grab an elastic, okay? And we're gonna attach the elastic to this little piece right here, which is called the end button. And we're gonna secure the elastic in there. And then on your violin cross on this side, there should be a little pointy thing. I just attach it like so. Okay, doesn't really matter which angle you use, but um, I find it's easier if the, um, this is called the chin rest, which I forgot to mention, this is the chin rest for your chin rests, literally. So I find that it's best when your elastic is going um, on the end button on the same side as your chin rest, okay? You can't make your end button to stay. You can also use your chin rest as a place to anchor your elastic. And worst case, you'll have to use the other side, but a thicker elastic because it's farther stretch. Okay? So let's assume that you can all use your end button for now. And you're going to place that sponge. Be careful holding on to your fiddle. Those don't like to be dropped either. <laughs> okay, so we're going to sort of just snug our nice little sponge shoulder fiddle rest, our makeshift one, in there, okay? And should feel kind of comfy here now, right? If you did a comp comparative, you'll notice that this is much comfier um, to have some sort of shoulder or sponge there than without one. It'll dig right into your, into your collarbone. So. Okay, let's continue on with how the heck do we put this on our neck? It's actually, uh, people really tense up when they try to hold the fiddle, stay relaxed as almost as much as possible without holding, without making the, the fiddle fall on the floor. 
it's actually, I'm not really holding up too much things, too many things, not about tension really. Um, it's more about placing the fiddle and having that placement correct. All right, so the first thing, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is sort of sit or you can stand nice and tall and face forward, okay? Look directly um, facing forward like so. We're gonna bring up the fill. You can hold it right here, right? The opposite, hold it the opposite side of that chin rest, okay? Uh, so yeah, you're just gonna bring that fiddle up. You're gonna place it, um, so if we were thinking like right here, right? That's forward. We're gonna place it off to an angle, like 45 degree angle, okay? So it's kind of placed at a 45 degree angle off to the side. My face is still looking forward for now. Eventually, right? We are gonna, I'm gonna turn my head. So now it's facing directly down the strings of my fiddle. You'll also notice that the fiddle itself is parallel to the floor, okay? It's not like this, you're not holding it up like this, but it's, it shouldn't be going down like this because we have that nice trusty sponge. Okay, so you should be able to just turn your head and your chin kind of, it should fit nicely in that chin rest now, right? It's kind of curving to your, to your jaw. All right, so now you should have your fiddle nice and positioned and if you've done this correctly and if your sponge is in place correctly, you should be able to let go of this hand and have the fiddle stay up. It's called look ma, no hands. Here we go. Take it nice and slow off. Look, no hands. Amazing. Okay, if you haven't been successful with that, try again, right? Practice is key. So hold your thing, hold your uh, fiddle opposite side of that chin rest, bring it up. My fiddle right now is on, this is key, is on, I'm holding it with my left hand, bringing it up and putting it on the left side or my left shoulder, okay? That's uh, if you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, sorry, try to stay, to the, <laughs> try to stick for this for now. That's a whole different world. <laughs> once you go to left-handed fiddling. So uh, it's a new skill anyway, so we'll stick with this. And then you should be able to let go. If it's, you're not able to let go, try adjusting this. You can put it instead of flat, flat across or horizontally across your fiddle, try putting it more at an angle and just kind of moving that sponge around until it's sitting nicely. You know, if you have, I have a kind of a short neck, you have a long neck, you might need to actually put two sponges in there or get a bigger sponge. Um, it just definitely takes some trial and error to try to. If you're still having issues by uh, the time we gather, let us know. Okay, so that's essentially your, uh, how to play, how to, how to hold your fiddle, <laughs> not how to play. So it's all about rac relaxing. Don't be too tense about it. Um, and uh, definitely practice this, you know, practice putting it down, you know, loosening, getting nice and relaxed, and then, uh, and then practice putting it up. Left hand, left shoulder, kind of look straight, and then all of a sudden look down, down your strings. All right, we're gonna move on. If you do need to keep practicing this, feel free to pause. And uh, that's the best part about doing this virtually is uh, you can pause and repeat a bunch of times, a million times if you really wanted to. Uh, another thing, another tip that might help you is um, doing this in front of a mirror or doing it on your, on your phone, you know, set up on a webcam of some sort. That way you can actually see what you look like. Um, you can see if your fiddle, if you're not, you know, being, uh, if your fiddle is actually parallel, you can see 
and uh, judge if you're actually being tense or if you're being relaxed. Um, so yeah, check out your mirror. Definitely, this will be a homework piece after this lesson. Okay, so assuming that you're all comfortable with uh, holding that fiddle or semi-comfortable with holding your, your, new, your new instrument, next is before we can actually go on to learning a tune, we actually need to know how to tune the fiddle, which can be kind of a challenging thing. I'm going to hopefully break it down for you as best as possible. There's a couple of tips we can do um, while tuning our fiddle. There's a couple of sorry, tools we can use to tune our fiddle. There's definitely some great apps out there. Um, violin tuner, literally all you have to do is put in violin tuner and a whole bunch of stuff will come out. Um, I have this one, it's called guitar and violin tuner. Mostly because uh, yeah, I play with my, my brother guitar, so kind of hits both both uh, both instruments. But um, if you don't have um, a phone or any of that, um, Simply Tuner is another one, another great app. And uh, yeah, if you don't have you know an app or whatever, there's also some really good great ones online. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, the app and you'll play and it'll just based on on the tone of your fiddle the uh the tune or the the, the thing will actually <laughs> say green for go it's good but since we don't we'll assume that everyone doesn't have a device um or a fancy phone you can also just type um myguitartuner.com slash violin and uh, I find this one is quite, it's pretty decent actually. So I'm gonna share my screen so you'll be able to see what's going on um, with this tuner. But yeah, type in myguitartuner.com slash violin and I'll share my screen with you and we'll go and take a look at that. Awesome. It's already, um, Refreshing, oh, actually, I'll refresh my page because one key thing to this there's two ways um, to tune. You can tune by ear, which is hearing the tone, right? Hearing that tone, which these are the string names, hearing that tone, and then matching the tone um, to this sound, right? So if I were to play the A right now, it doesn't sound like at least I don't think it does. <laughs> Let's make this a bit louder. All right. See, it doesn't sound the same. All right, if that's a great option, if you are musical, um, you are not musical, I suggest you click this nice green button that says turn on microphone. So once you turn this on, pop up might come up and say allow to use microphone all right if it does like allow and you'll be able to have access to the live tuner so first we need to know uh, our string names so string names the thinnest one is the E which should sound like this. So you can already hear that fiddle's out of tune if you're if you got that ear. If you don't, don't worry, you will soon. The next smallest one is the A, which should sound like this. Ooh, also very flat out of tune. The next one over is D, which is the next the second largest or the third smallest, also out of tune, and the thickest is the G, also out of tune. Wow, I picked a really out of tune one. So a way you can remember your string names, G, good, dogs, always, eat. Um... 
So let's start with the A. So you'll see when I click A on the little keyboard here, it's pretty much in tune, right? That's what we want. We want that needle to be right in the center. When I play, so it's saying it's G sharp, which is not good. We're gonna need to turn those that peg clockwise or that uh, fine tuner on the bottom clockwise. All right, now it's saying it's too high. So that little um, 50 plus button there, that means it's high. The minus 50 button, that means the tone is low. So if it's too high, that means we have to go clockwise on our, on our little fine tuner at the bottom right here. All right, so now we got to go counterclockwise, a couple of little turns. Oh, it's getting closer, a little bit, a little bit more counterclockwise. Oh, we're almost there. One more little half turn. All right, just make sure we go. Oh, that's pretty good. Now we're going to move on to the D string. That's this one. It's in tune. Now this is out of tune. C sharp, that actually means it's really flat. So we got to do a lot of turns count or clockwise. We'll do it about three times. It's here now. Wow, it needs more. A couple more turns. Hey, that's pretty good. Now we're at D. Let's do the G. Wow, it's coming as an F. So we got to do a lot of turning. All right, we're almost there. I'm turning clockwise because it says it's flat. Ooh, almost green. Ooh, I went too high. All right, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna do our E next. This one's also really low. So we're gonna have to turn that clockwise. Almost, a little bit more. So the E string is the one that can break really easily. So if you are down all the way, you might have to, I'm gonna have to loosen this fine tuner and use the peg very, very gently. Tiny, like a millimeter, I'm gonna bring it or push it in and away from me just a little bit. Okay, now we're getting close. Still a little flat. Okay, if your fiddle just went out of tune, I'll check the A. There 
we go. We are good to go. That is tuning in a nutshell. Um, you can also watch a couple YouTube videos on how to properly tune. You need some tips. Like I said, strings can break if you end up messing around. These pegs up here, if you do need to, because you screwed them all the way in and they're all the way at the bottom, you can loosen them uh, by going uh, counterclockwise and then you can tighten or loosen up here. But tightening is turning that peg away from you to loosen the string or to make it lower, turn it towards you. So another thing that I would really, really highly recommend um, spending the five bucks and getting is something called a violin sticker. So um, if I were to teach this in, in person classes, um, you'll notice there's kind of these white uh, little tapes on my violin or fiddle. And um, the, this is for finger placing. This is uh, to help beginner fiddles understand where their fingers go because it's there are no frets as you notice if there's any guitar players or or people who know a little bit about frets there are no frets on fiddles it's uh if you don't have a visual sometimes it can be just a guessing game of where you put your fingers where you put your fingers in order to make um make a tune <laughs> make a tune sound like it's a real thing so yeah i'd uh, highly recommend if you have played you know you know the fiddle before or the piano or another instrument you may not need this it depends how good your your ear really is um, when you're hearing a tune um, and putting your fingers on if you're like oh I don't know what I'm doing over here I would definitely recommend putting this on your fiddle or asking someone you know who actually knows how to play the fiddle to put uh, to put little stickers on your on your fiddle for you if not this is like like I said it was like five dollars on Amazon or they might even have it at your Lunga McQuaid's um, and all you have to do is earn a little literal sticker. Okay now that we've got our finger sticker on there if you don't have it uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit of a guessing game um, on where to play it. But this yellow strip here, that's where your first finger is going to go. Your first finger is your pointer finger. Actually, an easy way to uh, see fingerings is uh, if you draw out your hand, right? So if you were to draw out your hand and hold your pen like so, this one's going to be your first finger on your fiddle, your pointer finger. Your middle finger is going to be known as your second finger on your fiddle and your ring finger is your third finger on your fiddle okay and uh to translate that to where it goes first finger right so you're gonna hold your fiddle right that nice holding position we talked about earlier straight and then we're gonna look down I'm going to turn myself so I'm looking right at you so you can see my fingerboard. So, first finger, pointer finger, that one goes where that nice yellow strip is. If you ended up buying the um, fiddle sticker, it's about, uh, even if you didn't, it's about like a an inch and a half down your fingerboard, okay? So, that's your first finger, and that's where your first finger goes on any string. That's where your first finger will go um, if you're in the key, major keys, which is a little advanced. So, first finger goes where that nice yellow strip is, you can see. When I say second finger, it's going to be where this red stripe is for this song, okay? The second finger is a tricky one, it actually switches. But for this song, it's going to be that nice red strip. That's your middle finger, right? Now your third finger is going to be where that nice blue strip is and your third finger stays pretty much the same on no matter what string you're on let's get in the practice of um of learning tunes by ear so the best way to learn tunes by ear is by um singing them or humming so um we're gonna learn hot cross buns so i want everyone to to sing along 
or to hum along with, with the tune Ha Cross Buttons. I'm gonna play it so you can see the fingers and such, but also hum along, okay? Here we go. buns one a penny two a penny hot cross buns super key to have those tunes in your head um, best way to learn by ear is to actually know the tune and be able to hum the tune or sing the tune or um whatever before you actually learn how to play it um or else you'll just be going crazy and not understanding where the tone actually is and uh, how to how to replicate that that tone so now that we kind of know what's going on with the tune, we can, we're going to learn how to pluck. So, um, if we're going to be plucking, there's two ways you can pluck. You can pluck um, where you hold your fiddle up, which is the one that I prefer. All right, so I got my right thumb on the edge of that fingerboard and I'm using my pointer finger to pluck on the fingerboard side, right? You notice I'm on the fingerboard and not over here where we're not supposed to touch, right? All right, you can also pluck if you feel like your shoulders and whatever need a break, you can also pluck kind of like a guitar. like this but I of course prefer if you do it the first way that way you get lots of practice so we've learned Okay, let's go into that a little further and nice and slow. Here we go. The first note is your first finger on the A, right? Which is that second string from your right. A. Here we go. First finger on the A is that yellow strip. And then our next note is no fingers on the A. So let's repeat. So let's start from the beginning. First finger open one more time hot cross and then we're gonna put three fingers down on the D string okay ready one two three all three fingers that's our next note from the top first finger on A open A and then three fingers down on the D string which is that string second from the left. All right. And then we repeat that section. So we go hot, cross, buns, and then do it one more time. One, open, D3. All right, let's practice that section again. Okay, the next note is easy. It's going to be four plucks with the D3. So we already have our D3. So we're going to go one, a penny. And then we're going to do no fingers on our A string. So let's put that up from the top. First finger on A. Hot, cross. D3, hot, crossed, buns, one, a penny, open A, and then the last three 
notes, really simple. We've already learned them. First finger on A, open A, and then three fingers on D. Okay, wow. We learned our first tune. Now let's uh, stretch out. Nothing should be tense. Try to stay as relaxed as possible. Let's play that whole thing all over again. And we're going to pluck it, okay? First finger on A is our first note. Hot cross buns. One a penny, two a penny. Cross buns. You can repeat it if you're fun. Hot cross buns. One. Congratulations, you got your first tune. Um, next week we'll, uh, we'll learn that using the bow. But um, yeah, this is the, pretty much the end of the first lesson. Um, well, well done, good job everyone. Um, things will get easier over time, but definitely they'll get easier if you practice. So um, there's definitely gonna be homework after this first class. Uh, a couple of things that you're gonna need to practice. Um, one thing is holding that violin, um, practicing putting on and off either your makeshift shoulder rest that goes on your shoulder, or if you um, manage to secure uh, a fancy shoulder rest or a sponge shoulder rest, practice putting that and taking that on and off, practice holding that fiddle, um, you know, putting it on the table and what have you, then picking it up and then putting it up and putting it in its right place. Um, and then of course, practice your new tune, um, hot cross buns with plucking. You can pluck it, like I said, right? So this way, the proper way, so you can practice holding your, your violin at the same time. If you do get tired or practicing you know, half an hour, or whatever, and you're getting tired, you can play it, pluck it like a guitar. All I want to say is make sure you pluck on the fingerboard and not over here where there is no fingerboards, um, just to avoid getting those oils on the, on the strings. And so, um, so yeah, watch this video once, twice, five, ten times, uh, as many as, as you can, um, practice as much as you can, and, uh, and you'll hopefully be rewarded as a great fiddle player. And um, you should aim to practice um, at least. Uh, two to five times a week um, and uh, hopefully each time I would say a minimum of 10 minutes to practice or if you just want to simply you know practice holding and uh, I would I would try to practice at least 10 minutes um, um, and uh, aiming for you know 20 to 30 minutes each time and uh, yeah you'll uh, you'll be flying through this program okay before we end off our lessons for, uh, for, the, for the day, like I said, if you're not playing your fiddle, make sure it's in the case. Um, so let's practice uh, unpacking our fiddles. So if your shoulder rest is on, make sure you take it off. You can probably, you can leave the elastic if you have one on there, just for ease. Um, if you were using, you took your bow out to take a look at it, make sure that it's unscrewed not all the way so that it's, you know, popping off. We don't want that. Just, uh, just loose enough so that the strings or the hairs on the bow are nice and loose because that tension over time will damage your bow. So you're gonna wanna put your bow with the um, little contraption here. You're gonna place it in there and then put the the frog or where you're actually going to hold the bone um, over close to that side and you're going to flip that little switch okay and then making sure the shoulder rest is off there should be enough room to actually place that shoulder rest in there but uh best to put your fiddle in first 
right? Now the shoulder rest is off and there should be a little Velcro strap here that you can, um, that you can put your fiddle, make sure it's nice and secure. And then there should be room for your sponge just kind of in there. It can be all folded up, whatever. And it should close nicely, right? There's a, shouldn't be any gaps or whatever. Um, there should be not, nothing really touching. You know, should, it should close nicely, right? You don't want to slam the case and force it close. Yeah, you just zip it up and then uh, you'll be ready for tomorrow when you practice or later on when you practice. Okay, so uh, thank you again, Marcy, we wish, um, and uh, we will see you for the next lesson.